I'm John Rettinger with the review for you of the Samsung Propel Pro. And I lost a bet. So the Samsung Propel Pro is one of the newest Windows mobile phones in AT&T's lineup. I know it's probably already taken seriously with the cowboy getup, but as I mentioned in the intro, I lost a bet and I'm a man of my word. So let's get to the review. Samsung Propel Pro is a Windows Mobile 6.1 standard, meaning non-touchscreen, smartphone. It comes in a very square form factor. It's actually a lot fatter than most phones, but that's due to its slide-up QWERTY keyboard, which I am very happy to admit is really easy to use. It actually has a keyboard very similar to the BlackBerry Bold, meaning the sides are beveled. I kind of walked through the keyboard a little bit more during my unboxing, so check that out for reference. It is very easy to use, it's really easy to type. And one of the gripes I usually have with slide out keyboards, it's very hard to type on the first row of keys because your thumbs are always hitting the top. Not so actually with the Propel Pro, they put a little buffer up there. So there's a little bit of room between the bottom of the phone and the first row of keys. Most keyboards have a general learning curve, it would take you a week to two weeks so you're kind of typing fast on it. Really not the case with this one. I was typing very quickly, almost from the first time I used it. So really kudos to Samsung for putting together an awesome keyboard. So it's hard to review this phone without making a review of Windows Mobile 6.1 standard, but I'm going to do my best and talk about how the operating system works with this phone, not how it works kind of as a whole. On this phone, it actually works relatively well, and I've gone on record in the past of saying that I like Windows Mobile 6.1, in particular the sliding panel interface. I did a video a while back demonstrating it, and how it works kind of versus the iPhone. So you can go ahead and check that out if you want to see it in action. But that's not the purpose of this video. 6.1 standard is really easy to navigate. The sliding panels make things easy to change your ringtone, change your profiles, add a contact, add a calendar item. Really most of the most important tasks are very easy to use. The nice thing about this phone, and the reason it's a little bit fatter than most as well, is it comes with a very big battery. Windows Mobile and coupled with 3G make for a huge battery suck. But the big boy in this thing will get you through two days of pretty intensive usage. So that's actually quite nice. So some of the positives of the phone, some more positives rather, it is a phone, so it's got to make phone calls. And as like most Samsung devices I've tested, actually signal strength was very good, reception was clear. I heard a little bit of white noise on my end, but the callers on the other end didn't report hearing any of that. So it's something that you got used to very quickly. Wi-Fi strength, because it does have Wi-Fi, was actually quite strong, so I was very happy to hear that. I've always been a fan of the slider design as well, and I think it works relatively nicely with the Samsung Propel Pro. You can open it up to answer calls and close it to end it. You can set the phone so when you close it, it actually locks the device, so you won't dial anybody in your pocket, which is a very nice feature in my opinion. So some of the iffy things about the device. It does not have an actual D-pad. It uses this little joystick in the middle here. Let me zoom in so you guys can see what I'm talking about right there in the middle. It's got a joystick that actually serves as five-way navigation. So you push it up for up, down for down, left to right obviously, and select it right in the middle. And wow, this cowboy head is big. So I'll go ahead and zoom back out a little bit here. The navigation takes a little bit of getting used to with the joystick. It's not so intuitive and sometimes your finger slips off of it. It's not raised terribly much. There's only a little bit of room for your thumb to slip on the, underneath it or on the side or whichever way you're going. Therefore, you have to be very conscious of your movements. But once you do get used to it, it does work very well, and it is certainly fluid. Hardware-wise, there aren't many hardware buttons actually on it. Two buttons on the top for selecting the menu items, a send and end key, and your typical home and back button for Windows Mobile. So nothing revolutionary there. I do have to say the build quality on the phone is also actually very nice as well, since we're talking about some of the positive things. It felt solid, the sliding mechanism is spring-assisted, I never felt like it was going to break, which is nice. Slider phones can sometimes have sort of a cheap feel to them if the mechanism isn't built properly. So I'm very happy to report that in this case it was built very nice. So some of the negatives. The biggest negative for me is this thing is a fingerprint magnet. It showed during my unboxing how reflective it is. In fact, it's almost used as a mirror. But man, anytime you touch this or pull out of your pocket, you're going to have fingerprints all over it. And no matter how many times you wash your face, since you pull this thing away, it's going to have some gunk on it which is not going to be so cool. So you're always kind of going like this, cleaning off the phone or wiping down your sleeve or using the tissue, whatever it is to clean the phone, you're always going to be using that. So because of the unique design, the phone is a little bit big. It's certainly a pocketable phone, but if you're a cowboy, for example, wearing some tight jeans, 
you're going to have a hard time fitting in your pocket. So definitely something to be aware of. It is kind of short and stout as well. So definitely makes a very noticeable well, <laughs> bulge in your pocket. But, you know, it's nothing that bad, nothing you can't deal with. I do like the 320 by 320 screen that's on here. It's actually the first for a Windows Mobile standard device. It actually makes it very easy for navigation. You can really view emails and texts and the internet text space wise uh, very nice and easily. So, again, props to Samsung for that. I don't have any negatives with this phone. If Windows Mobile is for you, then you're going to like it. If you don't like Windows Mobile, then stay very far away because it is, at its heart, a Windows Mobile 6.1 standard device. So guys, this is John Rettinger with a quick review for you of the Samsung Propel Pro. I hope you enjoyed. It will run you $149 minus a $50 mail-in rebate and a soul-sucking two-year contract on AT&T. Anyway, for exclusive content, be sure to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers, and I will see you guys in the next video.